I had witnessed guys who were speaking to their rucksacks, who were throwing photos of their family off the mountain, who honestly thought they were going to die. I had moments going up a steep rock step where I was convinced I was going to die when I saw a body beneath me. First body I'd ever seen, I'd never seen anything like it. And the overriding emotion was, I don't want to end up like that. I don't want to be in that position. I was 17 years old when my dad gave me a book by Bear Grylls called Facing Up. And I read this and something about it struck a chord. You know, halfway through the book, I was immediately on Wikipedia. I was looking up Everest. I was meant to be revising for my exams at the time. I'd find out about the seven summits, the highest mountain on every continent. I'd never climbed. And I, within six months, was on an expedition to South America. And I was climbing the highest mountain outside the Himalayas. I'd never spent that much time away from home. I'd never been camping properly. You know, it was all a huge learning curve. And I managed to switch in my head a trigger and said, I want to fulfill this ambition of mine. And I think after I did that North American climb, I set my mind on Everest and it became my sole focus. I think the summit there in 2010 was something that probably taught me more about human failings and human fragility as well as its strength, more than any other experience. There was a moment higher up where I had X amount of time to get to the top before I thought it wasn't safe to carry on. I mean, it was 120 meters and you look at it and it was achievable. You know, if I saw that at sea level now, you think you could run up that very, very quickly. But my chance of dying were immeasurably higher if I carried on going. And yeah, you've reached the summit, but at, at the expense of what? I was always asked by my dad, are you a man or a mouse? And I think those things stick with you a little bit. You have to fail at some point, and it's how you react to that. And I think up until that point, my, I wouldn't say my life, but my climbing career certainly had gone too smoothly. And suddenly you have this this major obstacle that you got to overcome, which was not something Everest on that first attempt. I think the moment for me that struck on my second Everest attempt was when I passed the moment I turned around on my first attempt. And then you get to the summit slopes and then the sun rises and you're suddenly this great ambition becomes a realization that it's actually going to happen. By not summiting that first attempt, it made the second one a lot more exciting, a lot more fulfilling as well. It was the final mountain of those seven instead of being the fifth one. I mean, yeah, I would have finished it in Antarctica or Indonesia. Fantastic climbs, but it's not like finishing on Everest. So sometimes, you know, that, that funny word fate comes into play.